On this episode of RC Kicks, Gavin spends an absolute fortune restoring a striker, and then the idiot does it again and spends even more on his astute. Hi and welcome to RC Kicks. On today's show we finally finish my striker build. Now it's been quite a while so I'll put a link up here to the previous videos if you haven't seen them already where I dismantled and restored two strikers and then we gave away one striker to a lucky RC Kicks viewer. Now why has it taken so long? Well I decided that the striker needed it to be lifted a little bit so I wanted to make this one a special one so I actually sent off the top section with the driver to be professionally painted. Now I'll put some pictures up here and you can see just how amazing it turned out. Um, I'm gobsmacked how good they are. So what's left to do? Not a lot really. I've got to polish up the white body that was painted get it nice and shiny and then we've got to apply the original decals that I've got here. Now I've only got one shot at these because they're super expensive so hopefully I'll get it right. After that it should be good to go. So what's first? Right well we're going to polish up the body. Now I'm just using some tea cut which is uh, in the UK it's a cutting compound for paint. It's very very uh, fine abrasion just to polish it up. Now the professional painter has already polished up the top section for me so really I'm just matching up the bottom with the top. So let's do that first and then hopefully if I'm happy with that we can then move on to cutting all the stickers out. So that didn't take very long at all and it's just cutting back any high spots and things like that. Now Obviously the body clips will scratch over time because it's soft plastic. So, uh, but just to get the paint nice and flat and take off any orange peel or anything like that, um, which came up fine. So it only took me five minutes, didn't take very long at all. Next, the more slightly more challenging uh, aspect is fitting these decals. Now I've got one shot at this and I can't mess it up. Right, wish me luck. <laughs> Well, all finished. I got all the decals on in the end. It was a lot more tricky than I thought, actually, mainly because they join from one sticker to the next to the next. So you've got to be really careful that if you don't line up the first one correctly, the second one won't line up, and then the third one will be completely out. But you don't know that you've lined up the first one until you've done the second one. But what I found was the way that I did it was I did this one first, and then this one, and then that one. Now, sometimes I feel like I have to do the stripe first and then align it here. But what's nice about this car is when you line up the first sticker, as long as you get the two points correct and then you use this as your straight edge, you can get this uh, first sticker on without any problems. Then the second sticker goes up and over and there's actually an overlap that you, you use these stickers to line up these lines. Normally what I want to do though is I always want my overlap to face away from me. So I try to get the overlaps to go from the front to the back of the car, but you can't do that on this one. It would uh, be too difficult because you use the top the, the top sticker to line up with the, 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 the first sticker, if that makes any sense. If you do it the other way around, it won't line up. So that was that thing. And then when you come down here, then you go on to do the last sticker here. I actually laid it up from the bottom up and over, not from the top down, because I want to try and keep this white line straight. So that was the hardest stickers were actually this one and this one on the other side. They were the most difficult. These are very easy. These are easy. 
Um, but uh, overall, um, one other thing I did differently on the striker is it asks you to cut these sections out. What I found was better was just to cut the S and the R off completely, then line up the middle section, then just put the S and the R using the center section as your true up lines. Uh, I just found that to be much nicer because if you leave them connected, the R rolls up onto this high point. Um, whereas by doing that, I can extend this spacing just a fraction to give me plenty of room so it sits nicely. So there we go. Turned out really nice in the end. I'm really happy with it. Have I con uh, convinced you that this is actually not as bad looking a car as what people think? Or is it still just an ugly duckling and you wouldn't go near it with a uh, barge pole? Put your comments below. So that's the striker all done and dusted. Another small project that I'm desperately trying to get out of the way before we kick off the massive great big clogbuster build is a few little tweaks to my astute. If you didn't see the last video on the astute where I fitted a TTC gearbox to it, as well as a few other bits and pieces, I'll put a link up here. Now I sent off for some metal parts. So I've got some front uprights. We've got some rear uh, uprights. We've got some steering knuckles and we've got a set of upgraded rear uh, lower arms the updated one that had the extra strength in this section so uh, we're going to fit these quickly and that's another little project ticked off and then we can move on to the big one i'm really looking forward to the clogbuster build i've ordered a load of upgradable parts and mod parts and stuff like that but the plan is we're going to basically build the car in stock first test it review it see what we think and then uh, as all my upgrade parts arrive we'll then do a stage one upgrade to stage two upgrade anyway we digress back to the astute Right, let's get the front uh, dismantled so we can fit these. That's the whole front done. Everything's working as it should. And I'm really impressed with those parts. So far, this Jazz Rider, which is www.jazzrider.com, I'll put it below as well. The quality's pretty nice actually, and they look very stealth. So if you're looking to upgrade some parts that are very weak on your old vintage car, um, if you stick with the black, really chuffed. Right, back's a little bit more uh, involved. So we've got to take the tyres off, bottom arms off, and then take all the hubs apart. So let's crack on with that. That's one side of the rear done. Now, if you can see here, I'll put some close up images. It's actually missing a section. It should be like that, but it's actually been completely snapped off. Apart from that, the actual back section is okay. Um, that was a little bit more difficult to do because of space without taking the gearbox off, but it is possible to do it. Just gotta do the other side now. Uh, again, still really happy with the rear parts from them uh, from Jazz Rider. The only thing I would recommend Jazz Rider to do is they've given you some uh, bushings, but they don't give you enough to do all of it. So you have to kind of decide where you want to put the um, polyurethane or whatever these bushes are, and where to use the old brass ones. Um, whereas I just you doesn't tell you there's no instructions of where to put them. So you have to kind of decide where you want them to be. That's the only thing I'd probably do differently. Right, let's do the other side. And then uh, this one's sorted. So 
So there you go, a few little chores out of the way and I'm really chuffed with the way the, the Astute is coming along. Um, what's next for the Astute? Uh, I have a whole new body to paint, so I'll probably do that uh, at some point. Apart from that, uh, a total strip down and total rebuild, but it's actually in pretty decent condition now because I've done all the arms and everything. So it will, it will reappear on the channel probably towards the end of the year, I would think. Um, but it's now completely sorted, so it's just a new body. Not that this body is bad in any way, it's just I'd like to actually paint one up myself, um, so I'll do that on the show. Right, thanks very much. Please like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can uh, make one-off donations. I'll put a link below here. If you'd like to become a patron and support the channel, I'll also put the link down here. Um, don't forget to head over to Facebook, uh, RC Kicks. There's 1,750 people chatting away about all RC cars from novice all the way up, regardless of brand. Uh, and they're a friendly bunch. So head over there if you've got any questions or anything like that. And I uh, watch and I read every comment that's on there as well. So uh, you can get hold of me over there. Thanks so much. See you on the next one. Bye bye. Check out one of these RC Kicks videos for some more RC fun.